with the cloud. All right, great. Go ahead, Uzo. All right, thank you. I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Uzo Ofoma Chukuma. Uh, my full-time role is the uh, Alumni Relations Manager at Lagos Business School. I am really honored to be here to introduce the speaker for today, Funke Bokno Ofute. Everyone, you need to just do a clap emotion for this spectacular lady. She's the founder and current CEO of the Zafaya Events Group. She has delivered well over 1,500 successful events across the globe. She has published the Essential Bridal Handbook, a first of its kind wedding resource for the African market and probably beyond. Zafaya Training Academy in 2009, which she started, has birthed over 500 events professionals. Zafaya Connect series has brought together past interns and staff of Zafaya events and alumni of the Zafaya Training Academy to collaborate together. It takes a special woman to bring people that has worked for her before and now together, it really does. She has also started the Event Experience Africa Texas, which is TEXA, which is an annual conference geared towards equipping an ever-growing audience of event entrepreneurs with the right tools needed to thrive in the industry, regarded as one of the top three wedding planners in Africa, and was recently appointed a member of the advisory board for the Destination Wedding Planners Congress. She has been included in the BBC 100 Most Inspirational Women in the World 2016 wow. and has featured in several local and international media platforms such as Forbes, Woman Africa, and CNN Inside Africa. Please, everyone, if you're not standing, you can stand, give a standing ovation, do a clap emotion, and welcome Mrs. Fukne, Funke Bokno Ute. <laughs> Hi everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Can you all hear me? Good evening. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. Good we evening. Can. Good evening. I'm sure that for those of you that have, have been watching, you'll probably see that I've been um, trying to navigate uh, my system. I'm actually um, having to work from a client office at the moment because I've been in a meeting since one o'clock to come out and say I needed to come and do this. So apologies, you know, I'm just in the middle of so many things. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Yes. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm just going to quickly, um, you know, um, speak and try and share as best as I can. Um, right, Miri, I'm, I'm supposed to speak, or you, I mean, I remember I'm just supposed to speak right and you'll ask me questions later, right? Yes, yes, that's the idea. Okay, all right, okay. So ideally, I would have had my lighting, I would have had all the things, all the works, but I apologize. No problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm supposed to be talking about managing your business, um, you know, during tough times, you know, and, um, you know, I know that for a lot of people, you definitely know that, you know, apart from even this tough time that we all experienced in the last, you know, 16 months, we've also, well, every, every business has always experienced a tough time. So there's no time, you know, that in any business, there's no rosy moments in a business. Most of the time in businesses, there will always be times that are challenging and times that are tough. So how do you, hold on. All right, everyone, we're just going to wait a few minutes. So oh, apologies. Yes, I'm back. Sorry. You know, like I said, I'm borrowing an office. So people are walking. In fact, I wish I could find a place. Right. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. So yeah, so managing yeah, everybody, okay. you, would, you would know that every business, you know, there'll be tough times and there'll be challenging times. And there'll be times that you want to give up. There'll be times that the business will be pressure on every side of the business. There'll be times that you want to give up, you want to be you're fully, you know, it's like you need to, you, you need to almost, you want to check out of the business. You know how many people have gone through that? Can I see your comments in the comment section? How many All the times time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All the time. All the time. That is the truth of it. You know, there's no time. Even back today, 
I almost said, you know what, I'm tired. I, I, I don't want to, I'm tired. I just, why am I, I'm stressed out, you know, but guess what? You know, one of the things that has helped me, and I'll, and I'll share one or two of them with you, is that you need to understand the reason why you're doing something. What is your why? Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, a lot of people say that, oh, I go into, I'm going into business because I want to make money. That is okay. I'm going into business because I want to create an impact. That is fine. I'm going into business because I want to influence the next generation. That is okay. I'm going into business because I just love what I do. I'm passionate about it. That is okay. But you have to understand your why. Your why is what is going to keep you going. Remember mm. your why. You know, I, I had this a really, really long time ago. And it is one of the things that has helped me. Because you see, there are times that every time I'm going through a challenging moment in business, when I want to give up, when I want yes. to say I'm not doing it anymore, I remember my why. My why is because I wanted to create experiences for our clients for people. I want to bring joy into the homes and yeah. lives of people. I want to help people navigate ceremonies and their celebrations and even their sad moments. I want to make sure that they are happy when they are doing it. And I want to relieve the pressure. That is the why. Now, because I remember my why, I know that there are many people that depend on me for, 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 for them to survive. They depend on my business for them to be able to navigate their experiences. So it's very important to know, remember your why. Another thing that I would say is that another way that you can manage, you know, your business during tough times is that you have to remember that it starts from the mind. So let me tell you what I'm saying. It starts from the mind. Look, if your mind is cluttered, if your mind is, you are depressed, if your mind is, you are, you are in a place of, let me just say, maybe sadness, discomfort, you can't even begin to navigate. It's not going to be very easy. You need to ensure that your mind is on the right path. Your mind is clear. Let me tell you, even for me, the reason why I'm giving this example is that even for me, I remember during, during this period, during this period when COVID happened, one of the things that hit me the most was I was afraid. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of anxiety. So when you are dealing with, yes. you know, in your business, when you are going through a tough time in your business, there will be fear, there will be, there will be anxiety, and it is okay. But you have to just let your fear and anxiety, you can't let it last for a long time. You have to find a way to get out of it. Your mind, your somebody has said your mental health. Your mental, you know, they say that you need to be physically healthy, mentally healthy, mm -hmm. and spiritually healthy, and even, I would say, emotionally. So you need to be mm -hmm. in the right place, in the right frame of mind. Listen to what music, what, what helps you to be in the right frame of mind? Is it watching television? Me, I like watching TV. It puts me in the right frame. Is it talking to your friends? Is it hanging out with your friend? What helps you during, helps your mind? You know, some people, they find spiritual um, be, um, well-being, you know, and it helps their mind because they'll, you'll be afraid and there'll be anxiety. Because when yeah. the times are tough, you know, it's like you are, you are in the middle of an ocean. There's a storm, there are winds, and you are struggling to come out of the ocean. You are struggling. You know, you need to make sure that you have a positive mindset. You need to make sure that your mind, there's a, there's a positive mindset. You can't be negative. So you have to always look for the good. I always try my best to say, you know what? Okay, what good is going to come out of this situation? I've made a big mistake. I've been, in, you know, this has happened. Maybe this is a period. I'm going through something really tough at the moment. But how can I come out of it? What can I do to come out of this better? You must always look for, you know, the reason, the positivity in any situation. I know it is very hard. I know it is mm -hmm. tough, but you must find the positivity. You must try and find the positivity in anything. It's hard. You know, I always tell people that I remember when my, even, I mean, this is about life, about business, about everything. When I, when I yeah. lost my dad and I lost my sister in the space of two years, mm. for me, I almost wanted to give up. I said, you know what? I'm tired. I can't do this anymore. Mm. But then I realized yeah. that, you know what? Look, there's a reason why I'm, go, I'm, I'm in my, I'm in business. There's a reason why I am doing what I do, you know? And there's mm. a reason why. So I, that reason is what kept me going.
So in the midst of it all, I had to be, I had to pull deep down on the inside of me. So it, when you're, when you're yeah. managing your business during tough times, you have to look deep on the inside of you. And, and I'm not coming to tell you things that are not true. I'm not coming to tell you things that I've not experienced because I can only tell you from my experience. I can only tell you what I have been through in my business. And at every step of my business, even from the beginning, when there were challenging times and tough times, I had to look for how to come out of it. And one of the things that also helped me was staying focused. Understand yes. the reason. You know why you know why you're doing what you're doing. You have to stay focused. Stay focused. Fix your eyes on the prize. Stay focused. You may be going, things may be going south, but stay focused. Why are you doing what you're doing? What is the reason? What is that um, um, vision mindset that you have that helps you to stay focused? Things will be happening on the left and on the right. Mm -hmm. Things can be going wrong, but stay focused. Then don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, that's why you have a lot of people. I have that's a lot right. of people around me. That's why you must have mentors. You must have coaches. You must have people that advise you. You must have friends. You must have family. Don't be afraid to ask for help. I ask for help. And one way that has helped me is that I've stayed humble. Stay humble. I'm never, I'm never ashamed. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? What can I do? Oh, I'm going through this at the moment. What can you do to help me? I ask for help. I'm never ashamed. I'm never ashamed. So whether it is a young person, it's an older person, someone that I see, if I see something in someone and I'm like, oh my God, this person can actually help me. I reach out to them. I'm never ashamed. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Help could be something, you need help financially. Help could be that you need advice. Help could be that you just That's need right. someone to encourage you and hold your hand. Mm. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't say they will laugh at you. Guess what? Whether they laugh at you or not, you are the one that needs the help. You are the one that needs to come out of it. You better come out of it. So don't be afraid. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Another thing that also has helped me in managing my business during tough times, I would also say is that you need to make sure that you build the right team around you in your business you can't do it alone you have to realize that you have a skill you have a skill that only maybe yes. only you have but other people have different skills don't surround yourself with the right team diverse team with different skills and sets that mind and sets that they all have everybody mm -hmm. has different strengths and weaknesses i have my strengths i have my weaknesses my team mm -hmm. they have their strengths and weaknesses leverage on that leverage on your team ask for advice speak to your team carry your team along don't say oh i'm going through this alone no let them know what is going on as a leader you have a lot of responsibility but as a leader you cannot do it by yourself your leader, as a leader, your job is to create direction. Your job is to help with the vision. Your help is to put everybody in the right focus. So you cannot, you can't do that by yourself. So when you're going through all these issues, because you've built yourself with the right team, you have the right people around you. Ask for help. Ask for get your team. It could be someone that is strong in in customer relations. It could be someone that. When you're asking your people questions yes. oh guys think about this oh wow guys even if you know the answer i do that a lot i know most of the time i have a lot of answers already but i want to hear what my people are thinking i want to hear their thoughts even yes. if you go in my direction people want to feel like you trust them so you must have built a relationship with your team you need to build a strong relationship with your team build a relationship right. let them know that you care about them because look when the time is tough when you can't carry yourself, when you need help, your team will be there for you. That's for the right. last 16 months, during this period, we've all had to lean on each other in my office. We all had to lean on okay. each other. And we all had to, we all saw that we all had different things that we could bring to the table. People brought different ideas. People will bring different things, ways of doing things. Do not despise them. When they make a mistake, right. when people make mistakes around you, Allow them to make mistakes. I know it's not easy. I'm not even me. I'm not the most tolerant yeah. person. I get very upset when somebody makes a mistake. But I think to myself, I make a mistake as well. So why am I not being so yeah. hard on myself? 
So you need to allow them to make mistakes, but correct them. So correct them, but and then also empower them. And then ensure that you teach and train your team. Because when the, 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 the stakes are low, um, the, the stakes are, you know, things are, the chips are falling, there is all these things you train them with that will help. I said something today. I've been in a meeting since one o'clock. I wasn't in the meeting by myself. Three of my team members were here. And I just told them last night about the meeting and they came here. If I had not invested in them and in their time, they could have told me they couldn't come. But they were all here and That's they just right. had to leave now. And mm. they've been here with me. Yeah. We've been having this meeting and everybody was tired. But I have to just carry them around. So you have to just try. You have to see your team mm. and see how best you know you can actually ensure that you you, you know you build the right team. Build them. It's not That's easy. Right. It's not very easy. Mm. I'm not all these things I'm telling you is not something that is easy, but these are things that have helped me. In the last 19 years, these are these, these are things that have helped me at every point in time. I've always asked for help. I'm focused. I want to make sure this is what I'm doing. Yeah. And even guess yeah. what? When I do make mm -hmm. mistakes, so this is another thing I want to say. So guess what? You, you, you tried something. Maybe it didn't work out. It's not the end of the world. It's not the mm -hmm. end of the world. And it's not the end of your life. And it's not the end of mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. You must mm. also know when it is time for your business, for you to be able to let go of your business. Nobody can tell you that. You can be running a business for 10 years. Maybe you don't make profits or you are at a loss. You need to check what is going on. Don't say, oh, they said I must stay in it for the long mm. run. Maybe what you need to do is to change direction. Maybe yeah. what you need to do is to change strategy. Maybe mm. what you need to do is to change your product. Maybe what you need to do is to change your marketing. Maybe what you need to do is to change your team. Maybe what you need to do, or even change your vision. But guess what? Mm. Don't stay in one place and say, oh, well, they said I should just stay here. I should stay focused. Staying focused does not mean that you're not going to, be able to, you're not going to change that um, strategy. It's like you're going on a journey. You want to go to London. Your, 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 mm. your vision is to get to London. But you may need to crawl. You may need to run. You may need to fly. You may need to go to Ghana first. You may need to go to, 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 the, to, um, to uh, Germany, to come from Germany to the UK. But guess what? You are in the UK. You are going to the UK. We're all going the same way. So, but the key, the key thing about it is that even as you're going, you may get there in a different way. You may get there in a different way. So, and understand, yeah. recognize your journey that yeah. oh, everybody's journey is not the same. Everybody's journey is not the same. I know that it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Some people may look like they're having a ball. Mm -hmm. Some people may look like, oh, they're having a great time. That's but it. you don't know the struggle they're facing. You don't know what they're mm -hmm. dealing with. And that's what helps me. I'm like, you know what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Another thing I want you to understand is that even as you're going through mm -hmm. your challenges, you have to understand that you are unique and you are different. And whatever challenge you're facing may be unique to you. But even if it is unique to you, it may not be that nobody mm -hmm. else knows about it. I'm a Christian and I, and I'm, I, and you know, when you look at the Bible, you will see that there's nothing new under the sun. Things have happened in the Bible, but mm -hmm. it's just different in a different environment. It's the same way in business. Mm. Things happen as happen to be different people. People have, fa have, have faced financial challenges. People have faced their staff leaving. People have faced betrayal by their yeah. team. People have failed uh, putting out the mm -hmm. wrong product. People have failed. They've lost, you know, business. People have lost clients by from bad customer service. But it doesn't mean that you don't correct yourself. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. That so one mistake, mm. one failure is not the end of your life. Mm. It's not the end of your business. Mm. you need to carry yourself and dust yourself off so what somebody said to me said okay you are very tolerant in running a business you have to have the spirit of resilience tolerance excellence mm. these are the things that will build you these are the things that will bring you out you know through it the tough times, mm. during the tough challenges, you need to be resilient in your spirit. You need to be resilient. You're like, no, yeah. this is not going to get me down. You can cry. Look, listen to me. Everybody cries in their corner. Everybody, you see me dancing every day. I Look, I can be crying. Everybody mm. cries in their corner. But when you come out, you, come, you go cry in your corner and say, you know what, I'm going to come out. I'm going to be resilient. Mm. And resilience yeah. just means that every storm that comes your way, you dust it. You fight mm. it, you fight back. You have to fight back. Yeah. It's like you fight back. Mm -hmm. You know, so you must be resilient, mm. tolerant, very important. You know, somebody says, sure, yes, mm. sure, sure. 
Show up for yourself. Show up for people. Show up for your team. Show up for your, for your business. Show up for your clients. Never forget also, you know, even in the, in the period, man, never, never forget your, your core and why you're doing what you're doing. Never forget it. You know, mm. when I spoke about your why, never forget your core. Never forget why you're doing what you're doing. Mm. Build relationships. Yeah. Relationships. You know, when mm -hmm. I talked about asking for help, it's this relationship you built that you'll be able to ask for help. So yeah. when people say, oh, I don't network, I don't go out, I don't, I'm like, ah, please, you need help. Oh. You need help. You know, <laughs> be as pleasant as you can. You know, just try, because you never know. If yeah. I'm doing my birthday this year, mm. a lot of people were sending me messages, people that have worked with me before. And they were saying things like, I was very, I'm very tough. Okay. And I'm, I'm even a bit, maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm getting older. And they would remind me of what all the things I uh -oh. said to them and how I helped them. I couldn't remember. So what I'm mm. trying to say is that when you build relationships, okay. you build relationships with people, mm. you build relationships with you know people that are above you, below you, around you, you know, yeah. when you build those relationships, that's where you will be able to find the help you need. So you know, so as much okay. as possible, build relationships, build a good network. This is a good platform. Mm. This is a good that's network. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find people that can mm -hmm. help you. And a lot of people think that everything is about money, 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 money. Oh, I don't have money. They won't listen to me. I don't have money. Oh, mm -hmm. sometimes the currency that you have deposited, what have you deposited over time? You know, sometimes it's, it's time. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's time. You deposited time. Sometimes you, you, you deposited time. Sometimes yeah. you deposited just even mm -hmm. being, you know, just helping the next person. Giving of your time, giving of yourself, sacrificing. Sacrificing, giving of yourself, giving of your, of your time, sacrificing in every area. Very, very crucial. So, you know, because there's a lot of sacrifice. Sacrifice. There's a lot of sacrifice. You know, you are depending on the reason why you're doing what you're doing. That's what's going to keep you going. It's going to keep you going. So, I think I've talked about. You know, uh, remember your why. Focus. Don't forget to ask for help. Don't ever be ashamed to ask for help. You know, change your strategies. But you know, stay focused on your vision. You know, have to have resilience. You know, be tolerant. You know, of course, a switch of excellence because excellence is what we want to make you achieve and do more. Excellence, excellence, excellence. You know, very critical. You know, and then of course, a positive mindset. Build your mental health, build your mind. Make sure that your mind is positive. Make sure that your mind, you know, as, as much as you can, you know, be, think happy thoughts. It's not easy to think happy thoughts. <laughs> not easy at all. You know, there, there are days you want to just curl up and just be in your bed. And there are good days, be good. Curl up on your bed, it's fine. Curl up, don't go out. Don't do anything. But guess what, don't stay there. You cannot allow yourself to stay there. So that's one thing I want to say. Don't stay there. You can't allow yourself. The days you want to cry, cry. The days you want to get on your bed, be on your bed, stay there. But do not stay there forever. Because you see, the more you stay there, the more, the deeper you get into the sadness and the pain and the hurt and all that you are going through. Because guess what? There'll be tough times at every time. Nobody promised us perfection. Nobody promised us, nobody promised us that everything will be good in life. You know, when you, when you learn that in your business and even in your life generally, you realize that, <laughs> you know, this life is not like that. So do you understand? So nobody promised us that it's going to be perfect. Nobody promised us that, oh, every day is going to be rosy. The next one is like an exam. Every hurdle you face, is, is setting me up for the best part. So I remember when I made it, there was a time I made one major mistake. I told someone, I said, I wasn't going to do events anymore. I'm, I'm tired. And the person said, why? Just because of that mistake? There have been worse mistakes that people have made, but they've just set themselves up. So you need to just dust yourself up. You can't please everybody. You can't get it right all the time. There's no perfect business. 
but you just have to try your best. So once you know that you have tried your best, you know, nobody's going to fault you for your best. Try your best. Do all you can. If you've made a mistake in any relationship in your business, do all you can to repair the relationship. Do all you can. But after you've done all you can, what can you do? You move on. You're going to get, nobody's going to love you every time. So the tough times are going to come. COVID came. COVID was one of the toughest times. I thought my business was never going to survive. I thought, I, I thought that I would, I thought that I would, um, it would crumble. But my team, you know, it was like, well, we, you know what? We were, you know, at first when COVID came, all of us were excited. Ah, it's time to rest. Let's go and read. Let's go and do this. Let's go and watch it. We're doing it. Then the next thing, the first, next two months, we thought, ah, wait, wait. there's no income. Yes, we have been saved. Oh, yes, of course. But there was no income coming. We work, we used to work every, every weekend. We had events that had been canceled, postponed. People were just confused. Even my team were getting frustrated. People were afraid. I had to deep, look deep down on the inside of me as a leader to so say, you know what? Hey, guys, I'm not going to let this thing crumble. I'm going to hold my, my team's hand. I'm going to carry them on my shoulder because that is what a leader does. I can't even if I'm going through the pain because of which I was, I thought I was, I thought the business was not going to survive. I have to sit down with the accountant, sit down with this. Then it made us guess what it does, and which is also when you go through tough times. What it does is that it also lets you see something on the inside of you that you never knew you could do. It brings out new things, it brings out new ideas. COVID brought out new ideas. I never thought in my life that I would be doing virtual events. We ever thought, I never thought that I'll be doing Zoom calls. Zoom call. I, I like to do, let us do face to face. I don't like all these Zoom, Zoom, virtual, virtual. But COVID made me say, you know what, you can, you can even digitalization. I remember that my team, and I was, you know, anytime they say, be, you know, we like to, you know, we need to be doing this, you know, too much paperwork. I said, I like paper. Leave me, I like paper. I like to be really looking at paper. When COVID came, we couldn't see each other for months and months. We had to be working online. Even things like flexible working hours. And we had to create it. So I'm just saying that when tough times come, those things on the inside of you, it's like when you're pressing, when you, you know, when you're trying to get gold, you know, you, you, it needs to go through pain. And that is what managing your business through tough times is. Your, it, it's like your body, your mind, your business has to go through a ringing of fire. But when you come out of the fire, you become stronger. You come up with new ideas. You come up with new innovation. You know, and you must constantly want to do better. You must constantly want to do better. You know, so those are some of the things I would say that, you know, has helped me to manage, you know, my business or our business during tough, uh, during tough times. I don't think there are questions, you know, and things like that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Those are, you want to lead right. the question? <laughs> of course. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Funke. This, is, this was amazing. Um, I mean, the chat box was just blowing up with comments, especially by greatness. Um, so the floor is open, um, Q&A. Um, please, um, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. I can read them out um, for our wonderful speaker. Thank you so much, madam. What a great, great, great one. Uh, we've learned so much, so many insights. Any questions? This is one of the most influential people in Africa. You need to ask your questions now. <laughs> All right, we actually have one from Riri. How did you manage staff morale during the tough times? Oh, managing staff morale. So we just had to think of different ways that, and look for different things that would motivate them. So, you know, we had, I, we appointed different team members to do different things and everybody had a responsibility. So maybe somebody was in charge of making sure that we had like fun and also create fun for the team, even if it was virtual. Somebody was in charge of making sure that we were thinking of new ideas. Somebody was making, uh, in charge of 
checking in on people, you know, calling them. Somebody was in charge of making sure that, you know, I, what I did was I also called them. I was always, I always kept on calling people, checking up, um, you know, on them. So that was what we did. And then we also, you know, tried, I made sure that they were part of the decision making. So when we wanted to reduce salaries, let's say from 100%, they suggested 50%. But we did 70%, the organization did 70 But they were part of the process of deciding what to do. They were part of the process of doing everything that needed to be done. They were the ones that said, you know what, we don't need to, to, to be paid this. You know what, we'll work from home. We don't need this, we don't need that. But we, they were always being kept, they were carried along. You know, it wasn't a decision that was just made from the top to them. Everybody was part of the decision making. So that's how we were able to keep their morale going. Fantastic, thank you. That's uh, amazing. So basically, delegated, um, you know, gave delegation to people to ensure that everyone was fine. All right, the next one How do you cope with difficulties in finances? This is from Catherine Agog from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, okay. Hello, Catherine. So, difficulties in financing. I think that, in fact, many times. So I think that what it is is that what we've been able to do is there's something I practice a lot and it's called delayed gratification, you know, and even in business sacrifice. So you have to analyze what is the most important thing in the business at the moment. What can you cut off? How can you reduce expenses in the business? Because reducing expenses, even if you don't have enough revenue coming in, once you reduce expenses, it will help. So we, also, we have to look at reducing expenses that was one of these ways that we're able to cope with um, you know, financial difficulty. You know, sometimes, uh, and to, this is something that is also very, you may have to let some people go because maybe you can't, the business cannot afford to keep them going. You have to be real with them. You have to speak to them. You have to let them understand why you are doing what you're doing. It's very tough, but if the business cannot sustain it, you have to let them go. I remember so many organizations, big organizations had to let a lot of people go because they couldn't keep on paying their salaries, yeah. paying you know, all that they were doing. Mm. You know, so you have to really cut your expenses, you know, maybe cut, you know, reduce some of your staff, um, um, you know, reduce a lot of things. And then maybe, you know, there's, you know, there's something in the Bible that says, there's a time to abase and abound. So there's a time when you don't have anything mm. that you need to learn how to, you know, cut your coats according to your size mm. and just, you know, be in a place of, you know what, there's a bit of scarcity now. How can we manage this scarcity? And then when there's time that you have an abundance, don't spend the abundance like that. Make sure that you allocate money for different things. So what we also did was, most of the time, whenever there's a time that we get a lot of work that is really huge and big, we allocate money for investments, we allocate money for future savings, we allocate money that we can touch if there's an emergency and the business needs to shut down or something. So we always make sure that you allocate that without forgetting the expenses and things like that that you need to do. So that's what I, I, I was able to, or that's what has helped me financially. Fantastic. Thank you, madam. Cut down expenses. Focus on what's, what uh, matters. Thank you so much. A question from Greatness. Um, what, what would you say helped you make your first million, your first million Naira? <laughs> it was just the size of the, the job. It was just the size of the job. You know, I mean, when I started, I was making 50,000 Naira, 30,000 Naira, 60,000 Naira, 70, 80. But I was growing in it. So I didn't start from making, I didn't start on 1 million. I started making 50, 60, 70, 80. 300, 200, 400. Then we got a job that we were able to charge, of course, 1 million, you know, 1.5. And then it goes on and on like that. So basically, the thing is that you have to just keep on increasing your value. You need to keep on increasing your value. Why do people come to you? We need to keep on increasing that value so that people that paid you 500 yesterday can pay you 2 million tomorrow. What are you doing differently than you were doing four years ago? Well, I've been doing this for 19 years. I've had, I have clients that I worked with when I was 19 years ago. I'm still working with them and they are paying more. So it means that there must be something we're doing right. I mean, we're increasing value. You keep on increasing value and be consistent in what you do. Stay true to your, to your core. You know, I said stay true to your core. So ensure that people know you for something. 
People know you for your work. They know you for your work ethics. They know you for delivering value. They know you for delivering excellence. Stay true to that, but build on it, build on it, build on it. And people will pay you for, in fact, for more than you ever think that, you know, they could pay you. So that's what I would say. Perfect your craft. Perfect your craft. Own your craft, own it, build it. Build it well. So let's say you are good at bag making, for example. You make a bag in a certain way. Learn how to make that bag so well that nobody else can make that bag like you. Learn how to make the bag be efficient as well. Learn how to make 40 bags in an hour. Learn how to, you know, so you just have to keep on building on that. Perfect your craft, own your craft, boom, 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 like that. And that's how I think you'll be able to make your millions. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Perfect and hone your craft. That's it. Um, okay, so this, this uh, question is from Judith. How can I work on my mental health? I don't know if you have an answer. I honestly, I would like to you. I'm not a, a, a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a coach. I'm just a, you know, someone that has just learned different ways that has helped me. So what can may help me may not help you. But one thing I know is that you have to find what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. I find what makes me happy. So I look for the things that bring me joy. I will not lie to you. I, I like, and I like, and the things I like, people find it funny. I like when I'm on my bed and I'm watching TV, I'm happy. When I'm on Instagram, watching people just, I'm happy. When I'm hanging out with my friends, I'm happy. When I'm dancing, I'm happy. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm laughing with my friends, I'm happy. When I'm playing with my children, I'm happy. So you have to just find what makes you happy. You have to find what makes you, you know, makes you happy. And you have to consciously want to make yourself happy. So you just have to say, you know what? Yes, look, there'll be times that you'll be sad. Look, like I said to you, me, sometimes, like two days ago, um, I was just looking and I saw my sister and her, my late sister and her husband's picture. For a fleeting second, I became sad, but I realized I'm not going to wallow in this. No, 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 no. So immediately, I immediately that picture passed. I looked at it. I said, no, 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 no. Oh my God! Even today, somebody sent me a picture of my, of of him and my sister. I said memories and so I'm sure he was just sad. And I said, oh, oh. And I said, love you guys. But I'm like, I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm not going to dwell on you know making myself sad today. I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy. Okay, just uh, one minute while- um... Apologies, apologies. No, I told you I'm in an office, so yes. Apologies, okay, yes. So yeah, so that's what that's what I do to make myself, you know, happy, so. All right, thank you so much. Um, so just find your own coping mechanism and basically yes. everything that makes you happy. Thanks yes. so much. Okay, I think I'll go forward. Greatness, I think um, the, the question about a low drive, I'm sure that's been answered. Uh, make yourself happy. Oh, wow. There's even a complimentary session. Thank you, greatness. Okay, let me move forward. We have a few more minutes. We don't want to keep you here. We know that you're somewhere. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to scroll down. Mm. Okay. I'll also, okay, this is from Riri Okoye, actually. How do you deal with staff who do other work while they are supposed to work for you? A client of mine who has that challenge. He has traveled and, okay. and seen her staff selling something else in their shop. So how do you deal with that? I think that for that kind of person, you just have to let them go hmm. and look for somebody else and just have to just keep on training and teaching and trusting. You, you know, people do, people, you know, but also let me give you my example. So I've had a situation where one of my staff did something um, that maybe to the world seemingly seemed like, oh, why this staff should be sacked. But I had a conversation with the team and I understood why they did it. And um, not, I mean, they were not stealing from the organization. They were just doing something else, something that they shouldn't have done. And, what I just made, I had a conversation and the person has still been with us now five years post that conversation. So you just have to, for people that do selling something else that, and they're not selling the organization, that's wrong. I would say you just have to let them go. I, that's what I would say. I don't think that you should, those ones you shouldn't pamper them, they should just go. 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you. I see a hand up. Ikenya, I think you had raised your hand up earlier. Um, I don't know if your question is in the chat. Um, I'm just going through the chat. If you can put your question in the chat. Okay. What's your advice when the CEO... I'm sorry, Yemi, see, I don't think your question was complete. So I'll just keep... Okay, what's your advice when the CEO is the only one driving sales? Ooh. That is a question, that is a challenge that I also have sometimes. So I think, you know, and I learned from someone else who said that look, you just have to just, it depends on what they were hired for. What roles were they hired for? Were they hired to, to, to drive sales? If they were hired to drive sales, then they're not fulfilling their KPI. So when my, my team are hired in our office, they were not hired to drive sales. It's along the way we now realize, ah, you guys, market now, whatever. So you, you have to just hire right. So when you're hiring, do you need people that want to, you need them to drive sales and hire people that will drive sales. So you can't just say that, oh, people are doing a particular role, then they should come and do another role. Do you understand what I mean? Except that they want to do it. So they may not be equipped for that. You know, so you may also need to help equip them, maybe go take them for training, take them for coaching, teach them, empower them then they can help you. And then after you've tried all that and it doesn't work, then maybe you need to just change your team or hire another set of people. That's what I would say. Okay, thank you so much. Change the team. Just just get someone that can do the job. Thank you so much. Um, now, I think I see this is, I think the last question I'm seeing here before I can understand. Polake Ibitoye, how do you consistently get clients? Hmm. How do you consistently get clients? Um, I would not lie. I would just say that what has helped me or us consistently get clients is just that we are we are not, we don't hide what we do. We're in, the, we're in people's faces. And we, we make sure that what we do, the product, our work is very good that clients have to find us clients have to find us they just have to find us they you know you just the product is so good they have to find us and we're very big on the power of customer service and relationships we don't take it for granted we're very big on that we're very big on we realize that the, the one client is a, another is a potential one client is can bring you 10 more potential clients so we make one we treat one client like they're the kings and queens mm -hmm. they'll bring us 10 more clients do you understand so it's very important to us so consistently getting clients we're always perfecting our craft doing we're always trying to reinvent ourselves we're always trying to do something new we're always trying to keep it fresh mm -hmm. so that's how i would say make sure your product is good Exactly. Make sure your product is good and your service is top notch. All right. I think this is the last question we can take. Uh, so we can relieve uh, Madam Funke to go ahead with her evening. Um, this is from Ikenna Anizoba. How do you deal with difficult clients? Also, how do you deal with the disappointment of clients going out of deals? How do you deal with clients going out of deals? Yes, and difficult clients. Difficult clients, why are they difficult? You have to, what is difficult? You know, when people say clients are difficult, I always ask, what does it mean? Everybody's different and everybody has different ways that they want to work. So you have to understand your client. And if, if you don't flow with someone, then you may need to walk away. But I always say that every client can seemingly be difficult. There are many difficult people. You know, you can also be difficult somewhere else. So you just have to understand why are they being difficult? Is there a certain way or a certain system or a way they like things to be done? Or is it that they just like to make trouble? You know, you have to understand what they want. I know clients that were seemingly difficult have become our best clients today. And just because I understood them and I understood what they, what they were trying to achieve or what they wanted or why they were being difficult. There are some people that are difficult just because they're having a bad day. Some people are just difficult generally. Some people are difficult just because they're looking for excellence that maybe you don't know how to give. Or they're looking for you to talk to them in a certain way. So difficult is very relative. So you have to understand your client. But if you see that you cannot work, I've worked, I've worked away from one or two clients, but very rare in my 19 years. I've said to a client, I can't do your job just because I thought, nah, this cannot work. But I've not done that in a long, in a, in a while. I just realized that no matter what we did or no matter how we did this event, this client will never be happy. 
So we walked away. That's the only time. But guess what? Every client is different. So difficult clients can mean different things to different people, <laughs> you know? And then you said, some, what was the second part of the question? Um, basically how to deal with the disappointment of a client pulling out of a deal. Well, we get that a lot. I get that a lot. Clients pull out of deals every time. You just have to dust yourself up and say, what? just think about it and say, okay, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Or what could I have done better? Like there was a job that we didn't get when it, we had been going back and forth and we didn't get it. And guess what? The client went to give somebody feedback and said, oh, we were not as, we were not, they, they thought that we'd be coming to their office every day or they thought we'd be calling them every day, you know? Some things like that, I just thought, eh, hey, so me, I'll be sitting in your office every day because I'm looking for work. What is it? But guess what? That's what they expected. So the client's expectation could be different. It could be that the client pulled out just because they couldn't afford your services, or it could just because the relationship was not going to work. Just think about what could you do better? What could you have done better? How can I, when I meet the next, let me give you an example. I did that. There was a, I went, there was a wedding I was supposed to do. This was a few years ago. Years ago, I was feeling proud. I thought, uh uh, they know Zafaya now. What is it? I got there and I was going to get the, we were going to get the job. The next thing, somebody went to do presentation the next day, carry them saxophonists, carry them laptop, carry five teams of architects. This is it, just to go and do wedding presentation. They gave the job to the person. I Me, mean, I didn't even know. I just wondered, they, they were not calling me again. And I asked, uh, why didn't they call us? Somebody now said, okay. You were, you were not, you didn't put your best foot forward. I say, hey, do you know the lesson I learned there? Not everybody knows the fire. Not everybody knows who you are. Every time you enter a room, you have to show them your capacity, your capability, your competence, and blow their minds away every time. I learned that from a mistake, from a client that walked away. So I could have wallowed. I could have said, they are stupid, nonsense. People are just annoying. They should get out. Of course, I did that for the first few hours. But later I thought about it, I said, ah, okay, it's true. Next time, put your best foot forward. So you must always learn from every situation. You must learn, you know? So no matter what, you, may, you will cry. When you walk away, you will go and cry. You. I'm not saying you will not cry. That's what I want you to understand. You will cry, but you will dust yourself up and say, what can I learn? What is the positive in this? When I pitched for this job, I remember, I remember one time I, when I pitched for a bank's um, um, awards, um, one of the awards, I'd been pitching, we had been pitching for three years. We didn't get it. Every year they would call us, I would say, I'm going. I would say, I want to get it. Now, why are they not calling us? What is it? Every year we'll put our best foot forward. We got it in the fourth year. And we did it for three years consecutively before they gave it to another event company. So what am I saying? Basically, what I'm just trying to say is that sometimes you don't know the reason why a client pulled out. You don't know the reason why you didn't get a job. You don't know the reason why it failed. You don't know why. But you just need to think about what is the positive part of it for you every single time. That's what has helped me in 19 years of running you know, a business in this Nigeria. <laughs> And it's amazing, honestly, like you said, in Nigeria, to have that staying power. That's amazing, uh, honestly. Well done, madam. One last question, and this is it. Um, from Akudo Ogotchuku, um, asking, please, madam, is it advisable to train staff at the beginning, especially in an area that isn't your strength? Oh, of course. You have to train your team. Ah, my sisters and brothers, you have to, my team, go and ask them. Even today, do you know what we we're talking about in my office? One of, one of them, I said, what visa do you have over your passports? The other one said, oh, I've been to Dubai, I've been to um, Israel. Another one said, oh, I've been to this, and America. My team, they have traveled all over the world, though. either from training, either from events. Even when they come, when somebody comes to our organization and I see their skill and I see they're lacking in some skill, they have to get trained. They have to get trained. Even event planning in our office, I, I, I have a school, so I train people on event planning. So my people get trained because nobody is an, a, a trained event planner. There's no university for event planning in Nigeria at the moment. So everybody has to, have to train them because guess what? If you don't train them, for example, your people don't know customer service and you want them to attend to a client, they will go and spoil it for you now. So you have to train them in customer service, you train them in marketing, you train them. Even if it is it's a skill, maybe they don't even know how to use Microsoft, teach them, train them, and don't be afraid that they will leave. People cannot stay with you forever. 
People live for different reasons. People live. People live because of job satisfaction. People live because they want to relocate. People live because they need something, another motivation. People need something. But guess what? You just have to keep on doing your part. Your part is making sure that your organization is, a, is the best place for them to want to work in. Put all the right things in place for them. Make sure that they are happy where they work. But if they do leave, don't be upset. Don't be angry. Do you understand? But build them. Build them. Train them. I mean, recently, a girl, one of our um, former team members, on my birthday, called me and sent me like a large sum of money. I was like, why are you sending me money? Like she was like, ah, you don't know what you did for me. What, what I've learned, how I learned, where I work now, the things I'm learning, the things I'm this, it was because of what you taught me. I am a star in my organization. I say, hey, me, little me. I took the money shower. <laughs> that is what I'm trying to say. But people will be, became appreciated. So at the, but even at the beginning, when you're training people, it seems like you're being tough. You know, but guess what? As human beings, we can stretch. We can stretch. You as a leader, you as the CEO and your team, everybody will stretch. But the key thing is recognizing the strengths and weaknesses of each of your team. So training is very critical. Never on that well, that training, you must have a training budget. Every time your people must consistently be trained. So that's what I would say. All right, thank you, Madam Franke. Amazing. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'm going to ask um, Ruby Okoye to give a vote of thanks before we release you. Oh, honestly, thank you, so okay. much. thank you so much for you know. I mean, when I reached out to you, you immediately said yes to me, and I was just like, I felt so honored. I really, I look up to you as a as a person in the industry. I just wonder how you do all these events. You know the Niger factor now, so. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you um, sometimes, well, I'm still in it, but I will share my story a bit later, but I really admire you because sometimes clients can drive us crazy in events, but we thank yeah. God. And you're doing a wonderful job. You're just representing Nigeria globally, you know, so really, really appreciate you coming here to talk to us. I mean, I'm sure that everybody, we're seeing it in the chat, let everybody just say what they got. What, what did you take? What are your takeouts from this session, everyone? If you can just write it in the chat so that we can see what, you know, what stood out for you? What are you going to do differently? Because that's what I want to hear. It's not just to hear the speaker, but what, you know, what are you going to do? What, 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 what has she said to you that's touched a nerve and you said, okay, for me, it's definitely that put your, your foot forward because I know that when I've lost work, or, you know, lost contracts, I'm like, oh, what did I do wrong? But as you said, there may be so many things going on in the client's you know, thoughts or heads or anything like that. So, you know, just as I always say, dust your feet, keep going, keep at it, especially in these times. So really, really, I'm grateful for, 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 the, for your presentation. For and, you and the thing I want to say, you know, when I said put your best foot forward, and there's a reason, and you mentioned that there's a reason why clients do what they do. Mm. I also want you to understand that you're not going to be every client's cup of tea. That's it, yes. Mm -hmm. so yeah. some, people don't like, some people don't like that I dance. Yeah. Some, some people say I speak too much English. This one is speaking too much English. They say. <laughs> so. always dancing. Why is she always look? We, we want somebody that is very professional. There's no okay. of fine. I have clients that have come and said, I want you to dance. It's because of the dance. I will use this. <laughs> okay. Forget why. In fact, there was a client of ours that when mm. they wanted to get us for a job, I'd heard that they had said that, oh, I dance, and they didn't like that. So okay. when we got up, I, I was, we were doing the job, I didn't dance, I was being very professional, very, you know, very, um, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Towards the end, I said, why are you not dancing with us? Don't you like us? Okay. I said, oh, you want me to dance? They were like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, I, dance. I said, okay. So I started dancing. Next thing, all of them came to hug me. We did four events in that family. Wow. It's, but now I understand why you dance. Your dance brings joy. Your dance mm -hmm. is, it helps everybody just be happy. Thank yes. you for dancing with us. Mm. And I thought, oh, imagine if I wasn't myself and I, I'm never going to be dancing again. Because, you know, yeah. as a human being, you know, when people say something to you, you think to yourself, hmm, maybe I shouldn't dance. Oh my God, maybe mm. dancing is somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah just yourself because everybody's mm. going to choose mm. whoever choose. Yeah. But if I, just make sure you bring your best work. Mm. Nobody can, when your work is good, even if you are dancing or your people will pick your work. 